How you doing, James Smarger here from JTEC. We're going to do a brake system test. Uh, the test is a six part test. Um, we're going to use the Bendix air system troubleshooting test as our guide um, to go through this. So each test has multiple components. Uh, test one is the governor cutout low pressure warning and pressure buildup test. So first, uh, you need to have your vehicle part. Wheels chalked as they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain both reservoirs, wet tank, wet tank, secondary tank, and the primary tank, drain those down to zero PSI. And then we're going to start the engine at a fast idle and making sure that the warning light's on, the audible sound is beeping, um, and then watch it build up pressure to so and find out where it, where it cuts out, which should be right about the PS or the 60 PSI is where the warning light should go off, uh, audio, audio alarm should cut out. And then we're going to see how long it takes from 85 PSI to 100 PSI, which should be about 45 seconds or 40 seconds. Once it does that, we're going to listen for the governor cutout, which is going to be that explosion of air. Um, and that should be around 125 to 135 PSI. Once we reach that, then we're going to, while well, with the engine still running, we're going to drain one of the air tanks, lower the pressure on it, in order to, again, look for governor cut in to start building air pressure back into the system. Um, so, first I'm going to drain the tanks. Uh, it takes a little bit. Um, it is a, it is, the air is, the pressed air is cold. So, if your air lines are broken, such as this, use a, a device such as a screwdriver. Um, another thing you should do prior to actually even starting this test, which we've already done on this truck, is do a walk around visual inspection of all the brakes, looking for any broken lines, damaged components from the, uh, Brake drums, brake shoes, this is brake, this is this brake system, so it's rotors and pads and calipers. Um, the uh, air chambers, any of the air valves, just taking an overall look at the whole system of the truck, looking for any malfunctions, so, um, which we've already done, and we don't find anything majorly wrong on this truck, so other than the minor one of the air valves, so I'm going to start on draining the tank. Like I mentioned, this is a this is a secondary tank, uh, the two-part tank, the secondary, and the wet tanks on the inside. Uh, there's a one-way check valve that goes from the wet tank to the secondary tank, so I should be able to drain both tanks off of this one valve. There's another release or air pressure relief valve on the other side. I'm going to go and pull on that too, just to make sure, just to double check that we got it all out. And that one is empty. Now I'm going to go to the primary tank which is back here. Uh, the valve is back on the back side. There is an airline up front, so I'll hold this one. And luckily we've already drained most of the air out of the system just from uh, prior use. So now, that's all done. So now we're going to go up inside the truck and we're going to start the truck up, check the gauges, watch for the, uh, the, low warning, the red lens and the red light beeping, red light uh, blinking and the audio alarm blinker on there. Come on, no. All right, so as you can see, both light, both uh, tanks right now are at zero. We've got two gauges, tank one and tank two. So now we're going to start the truck up, and we're going to uh, start building pressure. Fast idle, about uh, 1200 RPM. Alright, try 1800 RPM. And as we see, we start seeing both start building. That's the audio alarm saying that the uh, low pressure, tank number two is almost at 60.
Tank two is good. Light went out. Tank one still building for a little bit. And it should go out here very soon. All right, so it went out above 60 PSI, um, which that works. So now right about there is the, we can get to about the 80 mark. And we're gonna start the timer. Right about now. Now we're hearing for the, uh, for the 100, which it is almost at 100, and it is well within 45 or 40 seconds. So that one is a good test. Now we're waiting for the end, uh, the governor cutout. So we're waiting for the puff there from the back of the truck. Governor cut out on that lower tank, the tank two, which is your primary, your secondary tank. Um, <clears throat> so that was at about 130, and that it then passes that uh, test. Um, so now we're going to have somebody go and I have an assistant start draining the tank, and then uh, that way we'll watch the gauge and see when it actually starts re-engaging the uh, tank, re-engaging. Assistant's gonna start going back. Start draining air, so we will start losing air here shortly. And the tank, the truck shut off, which is a uh, EPA uh, anti-idle system. So let's start it back up right quick. There's our audio alarm. Briefly. Right. There it is, a little warning. Stop training. And we'll see if we can have the uh see the secondary tank is starting to build. quite quickly so there shouldn't have been more than a, a 30 psi difference in it um, in between the cut out and the cut in this one was closer to probably to, to 40 but that was due to the truck shutting off at the same time uh, with the quickly a quick amount of air coming out of the tanks so now we'll go and move on to test two uh, after we rebuild the uh, pressure Test two, we need a full air pressure, engine stop, parking brake applied. So we'll uh, continue to get the pressure built up here. And uh, we'll start that in a second. So now we're doing test two. Test two is the leakage test. Um, so we're gonna use, we're gonna be doing this test and uh, allowing the air pressure to stabilize for a minute. So it's been over a minute now that the uh, air pressure stabilized on the gauges. Um, we wanted it pretty much at full pressure. Engine stop, parking brakes applied. Um, so we're going to observe the DAG for two minutes, and uh, we're going to we're going to look for any pressure drop. So, single vehicle, which this is here right here for just a tractor, we need no less than four, uh, a four psi uh, pressure drop within two minutes is allowable. Um, if we had a tractor trailer, a tractor and a trailer, we can allow up to six psi drop in two minutes. And if we had a double trailer with the tractor, it's an eight, uh, eight psi allow, uh, drop. So we're going to check the gauges here and. Uh, watch for two minutes. So here's the gauges and we're going to watch tank one and tank two. Uh, watch for two minutes to uh, see if their pressure drops four psi. Um, the increments on the gauges are very large so it kind of it, it's a it is somewhat of a guess. Um, if you see anything that is excessive it looks like an excess of four psi or greater then it's definitely something you further investigate with a better pressure gauge. Um, but we'll watch and see if see what the movement is here for another minute 30 seconds um, And see how it goes
And if there is a drastic drop, um, and if there is an excessive leakage in the supply side of the pneumatic system, one or more of the following devices could be the cause. Uh, a supply line or fitting, low pressure indicators, service brake relay valves, spring brake relay valves, um, the dual brake valve, uh, a trailer hand control valve is possible, uh, a parking brake control valve, system safety valves in the supply reservoir and air dryer, and the governor, um, and also the comp, uh, sorry, compressor discharge line. So there's a number of different things that could cause the, an excessive drop in air pressure. Um, so those are some of the items that you could check if there were a, an excessive drop. Um, so far, it's it's been very minimal. Um, we're going about another about 10 seconds here, and there's been some intermediate time between that minute of stabilization after the truck shut off. So I would say it is well within the um, two minute four psi time or, or, or line. And so we'll go on to the next test. Okay, so now we're going to do test three. Test three is called the pressure modulating valve traction control valve cuff test. So what we're going to do there is going to be full pressure on the tank. We are right about the full pressure. Engine stop, parking brake release. So I'm going to go and push in the parking brake. Um, and I'm going to make and hold the brake application. And then I'm going to turn the ignition power on. Um, so what it does there, it's going to have the ABS system testing all this valve. So you're going to hear a cuff of air um, from each one of the um, different axles, uh, different wheels, wheel ends. Um, and it's, it, it's going to go right, left, right, left, um, I'm sorry, right, left steer, and right, left drive. And then if we had an additional third axle, we'd go with that. Um, and then the pattern will repeat itself. So, make a brake application, push in the parking brake. And I'm going to turn the ignition. And that was there, so we counted all the, all the appropriate ones. Um, all four repeated, plus the extra one from the, the main modules. And uh, that one seems to pass. So now we're going to do test four. Um, test 4 is a leakage, a leaking service air delivery. So what I'm going to do is I have full pressure, so we're right at the full, we're right about full pressure. Engine stopped, parking brake is going to be released. I'm going to make and apply with the service brake via the brake pedal. And I'm going to allow this uh, allow air pressure to stabilize for one minute. And then I'm going to look for, I'm going to watch the gauges again for two minutes, watching for again, four PSI drop. Um, and it also has that same stipulation of a six or eight depending if you have trailers, um, which we do not have a trailer. We're just uh, the cab today. We're, we're just by itself. So I'm going to engage the service brake and release the parking brake. And we're going to sit and watch, let it stabilize for a minute here. So in one more minute, so starting now. And the horn still works. So sorry about that. So in this, while we're waiting for this one minute to start go through here, um, if this does again exceed 4 PSI, uh, some of the things that we're going to possibly look for is a loose service line or fitting, uh, the trailer control valve if we're on the trailer or even without the trailer, um, stop light switch because it might be not functioning properly, uh, it possibly could be leaking air out if it's a, a switch inside the air system, which these are, unlike on the normal normal hydraulic systems now we're starting our our two minute time starting right in two one go <clears throat> so um, as I was saying in, in the hydraulic system usually they're just a manual switch underneath the uh, brake lever here it's usually involved in somewhere in the air system um, we can also check the diaphragms on the brake chambers um, that right there will cause a massive leak in your air system um, the tractor protector valve protection valve so that way <clears throat> if the trailer loses air pressure while you're hauling the trailer down the road it would prevent the tractor and the cab from losing pressure um, some other relief valves and, and uh, double check valves 
could also cause the problem. So, so far we've stabilized, haven't really moved much. We're out, our upcoming our one minute. <laughs> And while, as you see, we're still holding the brake down, and the parking brake is depressed, right over here. The trailer plot, the trailer is still engaged, but obviously that's due to not having a trailer. We got another 10 seconds here. I don't see a whole lot of movement in the gauges so far. Um, foot moved a little bit, so that was a little bit of release of air. So, um, but that right there is the two seconds or the two minutes. I'm gonna engage the parking brake and release this brake, so that way I leave my foot. So, uh, test four passed, and I will move on to test five. All right, test five is the manual parking brake operation. So to do this test, you want a fully charged uh, air system uh, in the engine idling from 6 to 900 RPM, so which is at idle. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the parking brake engaged, um, meaning the yellow pull handle pulled out. I'm going to put it in gear and see if we move forward, um, which we should not. So that would there be we're going to hold the parking brakes holding the truck because um, we're on a really good level surface here, so that would kind of prevent us from rolling anyway. Um, Next, I will push in and or release the parking brake, maybe it in gear, pull out the clutch, and, and move a little bit just to see that it works, and then using the service brake to obviously stop the truck. Um, so let's start the truck up. So that one passed, um, put it in gear, kind of wanted to lurch forward, just having the engine putting torque on the uh, wheels, but it didn't move, so the parking brake held, so we'll now move on to the test six. All right, so now we're going moving on to the test six. Uh, test six is the dual circuit system integrity check, meaning the emergency braking, um, and or automatic application of the parking brake, and or tractor protection valve operation. So we're gonna want a full pressure in one of the two tanks, um, We'll start with the primary tank for the back brakes and the secondary tank for the first tank for the front brakes will be empty. Um, and we're going to test basically the foot control to allow um, with one tank empty. Say we had a, 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 the tank caught a rock up off from the road and punctured the tank and we lost all air pressure on it. We got the emergency warning that we still had enough air pressure via that other tank to properly safely stop the truck. Um, so first we're going to drain the front. Uh, front axle or secondary reserve tank down to zero um, from the full, which we are at full for both tanks. Um, and then we'll turn the truck on and release the, or use the valve. All right, as you were, the engine will be stopped, the key on, parking brake released. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll engage the, uh, the, the brake uh, and we'll have a, a, an assistant push on the truck and we'll use the brake to, uh, to, pro, to, uh, to stop the truck. To stop the truck so that way we can see if the uh, emergency brakes are working so we'll pause it here for a second while I go train the tank
And that will drain the tank for the, the secondary for the front. It's also drains the wet tank. Um, and as you see, we have the truck separated, so we're only going to move it very slightly just by manpower pushing the truck. And then we're going to use the service brakes from the rear axle to stop the truck safety. So basically, we're, we're simulating an emergency action of, of uh, full release of air from this front tank. And so now we're going to go ahead and start the truck up. No. So as we're, we're going to go and just release the parking brake and push the truck and make sure it's in neutral here. So we're in neutral. We're going to release it. And truck's good. Go ahead and push. And we're moving. And I will stop the truck. And the truck stops. Now we engage the tank, truck. And what I'm going to do now is start the truck back up. Resupply the air to the secondary tank and then drain the primary. So we're going to pause it up and we're going to take care of that action. Alright, so we're draining the primary tank to the secondary one. A little bit bigger of a tank, so it's going to take a couple more minutes. Um, and again, it simulates the emergency loss of air pressure from the primary tank. It's the primary tank control with the rear axle. Or the rear axle and also the trailer supply. So basically we'll, what we'll do is we'll drain the tank, we'll go back in, we'll use the parking brake, with the assistance of a, with some assistance from the helper, we'll push the truck forward, using the foot pedal and service brake to see, make sure the truck stops via the secondary and wet tank. As you can see, secondary tank, or the primary tank is empty, secondary tank is still full. So we'll, now we'll release the parking brake. So that parking brake is released. We're now at neutral. And now we'll start moving forward. And we'll use the brakes properly to stop the truck. You heard the front and the brake and the back engage, and they will both release. Uh, and that right there passes the test. Um, some things if that test would have failed, again, you're looking through the fittings, looking for kinked hoses or tubes, um, the pressure protection valve, double check valves, the tractor protection valve, meaning if the trailer would have lost it, that the cab would have maintained air supply, um, the tractor tractor protection control valve, the parking control valve, which would have been uh, up here, relay valves for the anti-lock braking modules, the trailer spring brake control valve, um, and a number of other things. So, like I said, we before we started the whole test, we did a walk around and a crawl around on the trucks to make sure that there was no damage to any of the lines, any of the hoses, um, make sure the truck could maintain full pressure, no damage to the tanks, all the uh, brake air chambers were good, and the disc and calipers were good all the way around. Um, so this, track, this truck functioned fairly well. Um, so, um, but make sure that when you're using this, Use the test. Spread uh, it out. Bendix does a great job putting together this uh, the, the test check sheet. It gives you the exact uh, what you look for, and what you're supposed to. It even gives you the possible if it didn't pass this test, where to look at and what to look for. Uh, so again, make sure though, if you have assistance, uh, like I did right there, we go and hook him up with a soda for helping us out. You never want to let good help go to waste. Um, and, and also maintain a proper air system on your truck. So, you how to adjust brakes on this uh, Freightliner. 
Um, you want to ensure that the brakes are properly adjusted so that way we can stop. Um, now this has an automatic slack adjuster right here attached to the brake chamber. Um, and really the only time we ever need to do this is during the initial installation and also during a realignment. And the realignment could be done any time that it is possibly noted that it's possibly out of service. Um, so, first step we're going to do is that there is a uh, ratcheting screw, a ratcheting bolt right in here. Um, it'll have free spin clockwise and have a ratcheting sound counterclockwise once we get to that point. Um, on certain variants, certain different models, you may have a, uh, a paw that you may have to remove um, or a pull tab that you may have to pop out. This, uh, I think it might look kind of like a helidex, but I'm not sure. Um, doesn't have one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this using a 7 16 ratchet and extension and socket. Turn this clockwise until the brake drum bottoms out, or until the brake shoes hit to the pad. So I'm going to turn it clockwise. All right, there. The brake shoes will pull out a flashlight. The brake shoes are seated against the drum. Um, unfortunately, we have it on a lift stand, so we can't. Uh, can't show you if, if there's any free travel and make sure it's locked. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to back off one half turn. So I'll start here and I'll go straight across 90 degrees or, or 180 degrees. And there's that ratcheting effect. <laughs> now that should provide proper brake clearance between the drum and the brake drum. Between the brake drum and the brake shoes. Um, next. I'm going to go and check um, the piston stroke on this push rod. Um, first you want to find out what size um, air chamber this is, and this is a number 20. So on the air chamber, this, the, the recommended length um, of the push rod travel is an inch and three quarter. Um, but we're going to look and see if what the travel is, um, or the max length on it would be, an, a max length travel would be an inch and three quarter. More likely, we're going to end up having about a half inch, um, which is about ideal. So, what you do is place your tape measure or a measuring device or ruler up against the, uh, the face of the brake chamber, and then you find yourself a, a, an identification mark, whether it's the end of the, the yoke, or usually the majority of the manuals tell you to make a center mark on the clevis pin, or on the, on the clevis pin going through there with the yoke. Um, and we'll have our assistant up in the cab, <laughs> energize the brakes. Hit the brakes! There, it went, and I'm gonna, and I did not, I neglected to annotate my measurement, so I'm gonna go to the end of the, end of the yoke, which is four and a half inches, as you were, four and a quarter inches. Release the brakes! <laughs> and it comes back to three inches. So that is an inch and three quarter of travel. Um, which is acceptable. Like I stated, it was up to an inch and three quarters. Up, inch and one quarter was the travel. Inch and three quarters is the acceptable travel. Now, if we were doing this on a axle that didn't have the stand on it, I'd spin it here. Uh, majority of the times, a lot of most people will end up doing this on the ground. Um, so, but if, for the instructional purposes, we're doing it up in the air. It makes a little bit more visual on here. Another thing, once you I uh, have that brake applied. You want to check and see what the 90, see if there's a 90 degree angle. Uh, apply the brakes again, please. See if there's a 90 degree angle between the adjustment or the, between the slack adjuster and the, the push rod, which this one here is really close to that 90 degrees, which will uh, give you an inclination and in, in your visual inspection that this is at uh, a good brake adjustment. Release. And also at this point, you can go ahead and grease up the cert. Look for grease coming out of the SCAM uh, housing portion right up here, the SCAM gear portion right here, um, and also from the inside. So, otherwise, that uh, the also one more thing to check while you're under here is to making sure that every all the nuts are tight. We also want to make sure that this push rod is centered in the hole. Um, anything beyond that, if it's up or down, higher too high or too low, could cause binding in the brake release or possibly even caging here um, and that would be deterioration of your chamber so another thing to inspect and look for so then, uh, thank you very much for watching hope you uh, got something out of it